Tsar Nicholas II, his wife Tsarina Alexandra and their five children were killed by Bolshevik firing squad in a basement on July the 17th, 1918. For a hundred years, their story has plagued Russia, which canonized the family in 2000. For us, Nicholas II is a martyr symbolizing the entire Christian history of the Russian people and encompassing all Russia's grief, glory and greatness. But for others, the story is not so straightforward. Father Taikon Shivkonov recently reigniting the conspiracy theory that the Romanov's execution was part of a Jewish plot, claiming Jews saw the killings as a special ritual of revenge. Jewish groups are outraged, noting the story of Jews extracting blood to make bread is a myth used in anti-Semitic propaganda for years. But the ritual murder of the Tsar's family, this myth is uh, surely 100% anti-Jewish. So we were pretty shocked when we heard that. Both the Russian Orthodox Church and Russia's top investigative agency now plan to look into the Jewish plot theory. Further evidence for some of an anti-Semitic undercurrent, which Jewish groups want addressed by President Vladimir Putin himself. They have to clarify the matter. It cannot be silent. Jewish groups fear support for the theory at the highest levels of church and state could fuel widespread overt anti-Semitism. Especially in the lead up to July 2018, a hundred years since the Tsar and his family were killed. Well, joining me now from Champaign, Illinois, is Eugene Avrutin. He is the author of several books on Tsarist Russia and ritual murder and is an associate professor of modern European Jewish history at the University of Illinois. Eugene, good to have you on the program. I mean, this is quite extraordinary, a hundred years on. It's strange, it's odd that the Orthodox Church is pushing for this, it's odd that the state is giving them the resources to investigate this. Why are they doing it? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, and, I mean, this obviously has to do with the events that transpired last uh, week in Moscow. So on November, November 27th, the uh, Federal Investigative Committee announced that it would look into the claim that the execution of Tsar Nicholas II and his family in July uh, 1918 was a ritual killing. Um, a commission of the Russian Orthodox Church had worked on the case since, uh, as I understand it, since two, 2015, when a Russian court reopened an investigation into the murder of the Romanov family. And Bishop Tichon, who is an influential figure with very close ties to Vladimir Putin, told the TASS news agency that we strongly favor the view that it was a ritual murder. And for a significant part of the Church Commission, Tichon argued, there is no doubt that is what happened. Now, these are stunning allegations, and they come from a very influential figure who also happens to be Vladimir Putin's confessor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah and, and so when they're saying ritual murder, is it a wolf whistle for anti-Semitic blood libel? Do they really just clearly mean the Jews did it? Well... When we, uh, when there is there is an absolute association between uh, what what is called ritual killing and ritual murder or the blood libel, so this theory uh, that Jews kill Christians to collect blood for a ritual rite, uh, first of all, it's a complete fabrication. No credible evidence has ever been produced to substantiate the charge. Um, the accusation itself originated in England in the 12th century and became widespread in early modern Germany and Poland. Furthermore, Russia has had a long history of promoting the accusation for almost 250 years. And in two of the most famous cases, Belish in 1823 and Belis in 1911, mm -hmm. all the Jews charged were absolutely acquitted. Right. And I, you know, I understand that the protocols of the elders of Zion, it's, it was most likely to have been pushed out of Tsarist Russia in 1903 or thereabouts. So that's one thing. On the other hand, if I look at the situation of blood libel and I look at how a lot of Nazis, a lot of the far right call, um, call Bolshevism or call socialism or communism basically a Jewish plot, 
that has happened over many, many years. I've actually met Nazis who say, oh no, this is all a Jewish plot. Tell me how this reconciles with the country that helped defeat the Nazis. Why is this now a thing in Russia, the country that is the successor to the Soviet Union? Well, by definition, conspiracy theories contradict facts and their uh, conspiracy theories work because they're malleable, uh, because they're used as a tool to explain reality. And two of the most um, significant, so most powerful con contra uh, conspiracy theories, one is the blood libel, uh, and two is the protocols of the elders of Zion that you just uh, mentioned. So um, conspiracy theories are used for to explain certain kinds of reality, to abuse certain kinds of reality, and to, to contradict facts. And so um, conspiracy theories are believed both on the left and on the right. Uh, and people use this kind of stuff for, for political gain. Right. Now, there's some, obviously, there's some rewriting of history taking place here. Uh, Bishop Tejon is trying to rewrite history, and those who support him and support this campaign are trying to rewrite history. And generally, when people try to rewrite history, they're trying to reconcile embarrassing things or contradictory things. What is the bishop? trying to reconcile? What are those who support this move, this investigation? What are they trying to reconcile and make right in trying to explain Russian history? Well, they are obviously pushing, uh, pushing a certain kind of, uh, you know, they're pushing out minorities. They're pushing out, uh, you know, even the Jewish community. The Jewish community in Russia right now is extremely small in comparison to what it was before the collapse of the Soviet Union, but it continues to uh, endure its fair share of anti-Semitic attacks. And uh, what Bishop Tichen probably is trying to do is try to push for uh, a more, you know, united, what they call united Russia, right? That Russia is for ethnic Russians, and the blood libel is used as a tool uh, to, to promote this kind of worldview in many respects. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, they're trying to say it wasn't the Bolsheviks, it might have been the Jews. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when they reopen it. It's going to be next summer, 2018, when I, I guess we'll hear the, the results. Fascinating times in Russia right now. You do right. uh, Yes? Go ahead. I would be very curious to learn of the evidence yeah. that the Federal Investigative Commission comes up to substantiate yeah. such an absurd dangerous charge. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there's a panel of experts comprising reps from the Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow University, St. Petersburg University, and of course, the Orthodox Church. They're all involved, which is why this is so mind-blowing. Eugene, I'm out of time, but it's been really good to talk to you. We'll be watching and following the story closely. Eugene Avrutin, thank you very much for joining us.